There's a solitary, humble, wooden structure on a windswept hill in rural New England. To open the door is to engage our minds, our hearts, and our imaginations. In this place, preachers and professors, past and present, come alive as they walk the aisle, ascend the pulpit stairs, and teach. From theology, from history, and from the Word of God, welcome to the Saybrook Meeting House, an audio production of Saybrook Ministries. We should set a high value upon time and be exceedingly careful that it is not lost. We are therefore exhorted to exercise wisdom and circumspection in order that we may redeem it. Hence, it appears that time is exceedingly precious. Time is precious for the following reasons. First, because a happy or miserable eternity depends on the good or evil improvement of it. Things are precious in proportion to their importance or to the degree wherein they concern our welfare. Men are wont to set the highest value on those things upon which they are sensible their interest chiefly depends. And this renders time so exceedingly precious because our eternal welfare depends on the improvement of it. Indeed, our welfare in this world depends upon its improvement. If we improve it not, we shall be in danger of coming to poverty and disgrace. But by a good improvement of it, we may obtain those things that will be useful and comfortable. But time is above all things precious, as our state through eternity depends upon it. The importance of the improvement of time upon other accounts is in subordination to this. Men esteem gold and silver precious, but they are of no worth to any man unless by them he has an opportunity of avoiding or removing some evil or of possessing himself of some good. And the greater the evil is that any man hath advantage to escape or the good that he hath advantage to obtain by anything that he possesses. By so much the greater is the value of that thing to him, whatever it be. Thus, if a man by anything that he hath may save his life, which he must lose without it, he will look upon that by which he hath the opportunity of escaping so great an evil as death to be very precious. Hence it is that time is so exceedingly precious, because by it we have opportunity of escaping everlasting misery and of obtaining everlasting blessedness and glory. On this depends our escape from an infinite evil and our attainment of an infinite good. Second, time is very short, which is another thing that renders it very precious. The scarcity of any commodity occasions men to set a higher value upon it, especially if it is necessary and they cannot do without it. Thus, when Samaria was besieged by the Syrians and provisions were exceedingly scarce, a donkey's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver, 2 Kings 6.25. So time is the more to be prized by men, because a whole eternity depends upon it. Yet we have but little time. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. Job 16.22 My days are swifter than a post. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hasteth to the prey. Job 9.25.26 what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. James 4.14 4, 
It is but as a moment to eternity. Time is so short, and the work that we must do in it is so great that we have none to spare. The work that we must do to prepare for eternity must be done in time, or it can never be done. And it is found to be a work of great difficulty and labor, and therefore that for which time is more necessary. Third, we ought to esteem time very precious because we are uncertain of its continuance. We know that it is very short, but we know not how short. We know not how little of it remains, whether a year or several years or only a month, a week, or a day. We are every day uncertain whether that day will not be the last or whether we are to have the whole day. There is nothing that experience doth more verify than this. How much more would many men prize their time if they knew that they had but a few months or a few days more to live? And certainly, a wise man will prize his time the more since he knows not, but that it will be so with himself. This is the case with multitudes now in the world who at present enjoy health and see no signs of approaching death. Many such, no doubt, are to die the next month, many the next week, yea, many probably tomorrow, and some this night. Yet these same persons know nothing of it, and perhaps think nothing of it. Neither they nor their neighbors can say that they are more likely soon to be taken out of the world than others. This teaches us how we ought to prize our time, and how careful we ought to be that we lose none of it. Fourth, time is very precious, because when it is past, it cannot be recovered. There are many things that men possess, which if they part with, they can obtain them again. If a man has parted with something that he had, not knowing the worth of it or the need he should have of it, he can often regain it, at least with pains and cost. If a man has been overseen in a bargain and has bartered away or sold something and afterwards repent of it, he may often obtain a release and recover what he had parted with. But it is not so with respect to time. When once that is gone, it is gone forever. No pains, no cost will recover it. Though we repent ever so much that we let it pass and did not improve it while we had it, it will be to no purpose. Every part of it is successively offered to us, that we may choose whether we will make it our own or not. But there is no delay. It will not wait upon us to see whether or not we will comply with the offer. If we refuse, it is immediately taken away and never offered more. As to that part of time that is gone, however we have neglected to improve it, it is out of our possession and out of our reach. If we have lived 50, 60, or 70 years and have not improved our time, now it cannot be helped. It is eternally gone from us. All that we can do is to improve the little that remains. Yea, if a man has spent all his life unimproved except for a few moments, all that is gone is lost. Only those few remaining moments can possibly be made his own. And if the whole of a man's time be gone, and it is all lost, it is irrecoverable. Eternity depends on the improvement of time. But when once the time of life is gone, when once death is come, we have no more to do with time. There is no possibility of obtaining the restoration of it or another space in which to prepare for eternity. If a man should lose the whole of his worldly substance and become a bankrupt, it is possible that his loss may be made up. He may have another estate as good. But when the time of life is gone, it is impossible that we should ever obtain another such time. All opportunity of obtaining eternal welfare is utterly and everlastingly gone. You have now heard of the preciousness of time. You are the persons concerned to whom God hath committed that precious talent. 
you have an eternity before you. When God created you and gave you reasonable souls, He made you for an endless duration. He gave you time here in order to prepare for eternity, and your future eternity depends on the improvement of time. Consider, therefore, what you have done with your past time. You are not now beginning your time, but a great deal is past and gone. All the wit, power, and treasure of the universe cannot recover it. Many of you may well conclude that more than half of your time is gone. Though you should live to the ordinary age of man, your glass is more than half run, and it may be that there are but few sands remaining. Your sun is past the meridian and perhaps just setting or going into an everlasting eclipse. Consider, therefore, what account you can give of your improvement of past time. How have you let the precious golden sands of your glass run? Every day that you have enjoyed has been precious. Yes, your moments have been precious. But have you not wasted your precious moments, your precious days, yes, your precious years? If you should reckon up how many days you have lived, what a sum would there be? And how precious hath every one of those days been? Consider, therefore, what have you done with them? What is become of them all? What can you show of any improvement made? good done, or benefit obtained, answerable to all this time that you have lived. When you look back and search, do you not find this past time of your lives in a great measure empty, having not been filled up with any good improvement? And if God, who hath given you your time, should now call you to an account, what account could you give to him? How much may be done in a year? How much good is there opportunity to do in such a space of time? How much service may persons do for God, and how much for their own souls if they improve it to their utmost? How much may be done in a day? But what have you done in so many days and years that you have lived? You that are past your youth, what have you done with the whole time of your youth? What has become of all that precious season of life? Hath it not all been in vain to you? Would it not have been as well or better for you if all that time you had been asleep or in a state of non-existence? You have had much time of leisure and freedom from worldly business Consider to what purpose you have spent it. You have not only had ordinary time, but you have had a great deal of holy time. What have you done with all the Sabbath days that you have enjoyed? Consider those things seriously, and let your own consciences provide the answer. From the works of Jonathan Edwards, Volume 2, pages 233 to 236. Thank you for joining us this week at the Saybrook Meeting House. We hope you've been blessed by today's podcast. Saybrook Ministries' mission is to provide didactic and devotional content from the Christian faith delivered to the saints, recovered and refined by the Protestant Reformation. Be sure to visit saybrookministries.org as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages for continually updated Christian content designed to inspire and invigorate our imagination and intellect. Join us next week for another journey to the Saybrook Meeting House. Until then, may God bless you.